got the script and I remember reading it and I was laughing out loud. And um, I said, there's no way I'll, I will be able to do this. I mean, I've, I've said that before. I really thought that they would pick someone, you know, different than I. You know, a suave, good-looking mafioso guy. Um, you know, just somebody a little more leading man type, basically. But his masterful portrayal of the deeply flawed mafia boss Tony Soprano helped redefine what a TV leading man can be. He ruled ruthlessly on the street, but in his personal life, he was flawed and painfully human. How do people find the time? Uh... To get well? Look, my mother's dead. I haven't had a panic attack since. Gandolfini told Inside the Actor Studios James Lipton why the role appealed to him immediately upon reading the script. It's a man in struggle. He doesn't have a religion. He doesn't have. He doesn't believe in the government. He doesn't believe in anything except his code of honor, and his code of honor is all going to. Shit. So he has nothing left. The Sopranos was groundbreaking and launched a new era in which cable TV series was freed of the long-imposed limits on language and content. Tony Soprano pushed the envelope every time. The role would earn him three Emmys and a Golden Globe. An incredible accomplishment for this boy from New Jersey with two Italian parents. He revealed they weren't initially supportive of his dream to pursue acting. I said you're an idiot, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, my mother's no, no longer with us. My father, I think he's proud. He wouldn't tell me, but I think he is. <laughs> what was your father's profession? He was a bricklayer, a cement mason, and then he became the head uh, custodian of a high school. And did your mother work? Yes, yeah, she was the head lunch lady of a high school. What language was spoken in your home? Italian, but when they didn't want us to know what they were talking about, so they didn't teach it to my sisters or myself. <laughs> Exceptionally modest and obsessive, he described himself as a 260-pound Woody Allen. James was born in 1961 and grew up in Park Ridge, New Jersey. After earning a degree from Rutgers University, his first big break was on a Broadway production of A Streetcar Named Desire. He then played a tough guy in Tony Scott's 1993 film, True Romance, written by Quentin Tarantino and starring Brad Pitt. I went in front of video for, it was Tony Scott, I didn't know. And then I didn't hear anything for three months, and all of a sudden I was told I had this part. I said, okay. You seen them? Mm-hmm. They stay in here? No, they're staying at the Safari Motor Motel Inn. Safari Motel. Safari Motel? Yeah. How do you know that? I mean, uh, have you been over there? He went on to appear in supporting roles in Crimson Tide, Get Shorty and The Juror. Later in the midst of his soprano stardom, he reteamed with Pitt once again, playing a gay hitman in The Mexican. Most of his scenes were played opposite Julia Roberts. Not your everyday run-of-the-mill hitman. Is it true that three days into the shoot, you went to the director and said, replace me? <laughs> yeah. Why? I didn't think it was going well. I don't put much stock in those weirdo counselor types. All I do is sit around and bare feet. Throughout his career, and especially in the wake of his worldwide fame, James remained fiercely private in his personal life. He is survived by his wife, Deborah, who he married in 2008, their eight-month-old daughter, Liliana, and his 13-year-old son, Michael, from a previous marriage. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Take over for a while, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> James was a man of very few words to the press, maybe an average of three total. And throughout the years, we've tried every weapon in our arsenal to get him to talk. James, what do you mean to have a film in the, uh, the film festival uh, as an actor? Uh, <laughs> Tony, what do you think about Julia tonight? Your Julia? A man of few words. Hey, you don't do any press, do you? Uh, I'm not good at it. Just to say congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. For HBO. Thank you. I thought that was very sweet, uh, what you said up there. Right? About HBO and everything. Tell me about it. Oh, you know. I, um... I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> we even tried to get some advice from his Sopranos co-star, Jamie Lynn Sigler. I'd say don't be too aggressive. Right. Maybe just say, hey, how are you? James, we have a quick word for exit. Oh... Uh, you were supposed to help us. Sorry. James, what brings you out tonight? ALS. For the record, that constitutes an interview with James Gandolfini.
And the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, was no help either. You hop on this side right here, take the microphone, and you get to get on a hill stop for you. Here comes the prize. I'm jumping him. Watch me jump, Gandolfini. James! James, throw a dog a bone. Come on over. One second. Come on. Come in, come in. No, 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 no. Give me a little love. I love you, I love you. I love you too, baby. Seven years, seven years I've, I've tried to get you to stop, and this is it. This is a beautiful moment right here. How do you feel tonight? You gotta ask him. He's gonna say everything for me. Who are you wearing? <laughs> Oh, my suit. That was an exclusive Gandolfini sit-down right there. That was as big as it gets. <laughs> as great and in-depth as that interview was coming up,